Hey, Christina, good morning. Hey, Allie, good morning. Hey, Lori, how was your yin class last night, Lori? Was it good? Allie, you're a sweet soul. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, Nicole. D, good morning. Christine, hi. Welcome. Hey, Mom. Good morning, Asal. I'm not sure if you saw my story. I requested that we have a writing utensil at the ready. Because today's meditation is going to be more about breathing, more than just breathing and focusing inward. We're going to do a little bit of writing. So if you don't have your writing utensil yet, try to grab one in the next 30 to 45 seconds. Oh, that's my mom. Nalini, good morning. Hey, Chris. What up? Congratulations on the high appraisal, Chris Blunt. Yeah, so cool. Chris Blunt magic in the house. Hey, Kelly, good morning. So if you don't have a writing utensil, please grab one. We're going to do a little bit of extra, a little exercise here. Hey, Chelsea Pierce, what's going on? Good to have you. All right, so let me um, share some thoughts. First of all, I am just overflowing with gratitude to you. This has been a really interesting journey since early, mid-March when coronavirus started to get kind of crazy and our governor ordered us to stay home and ordered businesses to close and I started sharing these meditations in the morning and you have been such a beautiful support structure for me and for each other and, and hopefully for yourselves as well, gathering each morning for now a hundred days consistently. And this is just very, very cool. And I'm so glad that we've been able to document these and so they're available to the entire world. Whoever wants to choose a meditation to practice with, they're all there on the Instagram for eternity. So. Luckily, all the comments don't get saved, though. So whatever we typed, <laughs> I don't think those are preserved, but the videos are at least. So I just want to tell you how um, grateful I am and how joyful I am for that. And so whenever we think about our life purpose and our plan, it's not always apparent what that plan is. And figuring it out is a gift. Being able to be aware and to kind of solidify in the physical world what our dharma is, what our purpose for this existence is, is a brilliant, brilliant thing and it's comforting and it provides so much power for us because once we have the goal, we're able to shoot ourselves toward that goal like an arrow, like an arrow being shot from a bow. A bow. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Allie. And the way to determine our life's purpose is to, con is to contact that part of us that already knows. And the part of us that already knows is our soul. It's our higher self. You're very welcome, Nicole. It's been an absolute pleasure and a gift for me. So how do we contact our soul? Well, it's by quieting the ego, quieting the thinking brain, quieting the lower mind, so we can hear the whisper, the whispers of our soul. It doesn't speak loudly. It almost speaks in code. And we have to, it, it's, it kind of gives us a cipher, ciphering and we have to decipher what the soul is saying. And each person's soul speaks in a different way. We have to attune ourselves to the soul's vibrations 
in order to hear and to understand what it's saying to us and so then we can put it into action in the world. There are many, many tools to do that. We've done a hundred different tools on how to quiet the ego and how to still and silence the lower mind so we can hear the higher mind, the higher self. Well, there are even more tools. The yogis came up with almost an infinite array of methods and tools to do this. And some of the best tools that I've found are given to us through the modern day teachers that we have available to us now. Eckhart Tolle, the Theosophical Society, Rod Stryker, my yoga teacher. And so there are two things that I wanna talk about today in the next five minutes. I'm gonna cram a lot of <laughs> lofty <laughs> wisdom, um, <laughs> sublime teachings into five minutes here. So two, two things, we're, we're going to do something called a dream list today, a very short version of a dream list. And we're also going to talk about some of the principles in the Four Desires teaching from Rod Stryker. So let's talk about the Four Desires teaching first. Since we're not going to be meeting every single day, Chelsea, thank you. Since we're not going to be meeting together live every single day anymore, I implore you to adopt a consistent meditation practice on your own. And if you want to take your own spiritual path farther, I encourage you to explore the four desires. The Four Desires teaching is a book and a workbook, an actual book by Rod Stryker and a workbook that lays out a method for contacting your higher self and figuring out what the highest and best path is for you to do, for you to walk in this incarnation, in this lifetime. So in, in the Four Desires teaching, there are approximately 30 different exercises to do that help us determine what that path is. And out of those 30 exercises, there are four big nuggets, four big rocks. And one of them, I'm gonna give you a hint about right now that we can actually do together along with our dream list. So the one exercise that I can talk about in the next 60 seconds is something called a departure point exercise. And Chris, I'm kind of spoiling this for you. This is toward the end of our work together. Um, so you're gonna get a little hint of what's to come. So the departure point exercise is a very tangible tool that you can use, that I'm using personally, that anyone who studies the four desires can use to help keep you on track towards your goal. So what is the departure point? Well, the departure point occurs for all of us when we have a decision to make in our day to turn left or to turn right. And I'm using left and right figuratively. Left-handed path is usually considered to be personal and selfish in nature. Right-handed path is typically considered to be altruistic and helpful for the universe in nature. So that we are all faced with departure points all throughout our day. Do we make a decision that takes us into selfishness or do we make a decision that takes us into altruism and to support our highest good and then subsequently the highest good of everyone? So right now, right here, I want you to think about a habit that you do that is less than constructive, a habit that typically takes you away from your highest good. Okay, you got it? Just one. And nothing too deep or dark, just something that is a habit that might benefit you from changing, right? Just identify the habit. Okay, go ahead and write it down. It can be anything like eating too much sugar. It can be thinking negatively about yourself, so the negative self-talk. It can be judging. So be honest with yourself. Do you see another person and you judge them immediately with what they're wearing, what they look like, what, how they speak? All right, so write down the habit that takes you away from your highest good. Once you've written that down, I'll give you another few seconds for that. The process of the departure point exercise is to consciously pause before you're faced with engaging in the habit or not. So if it's eating too much chocolate cake, if it's eating too much, too many carbs, what, what, whatever it might be, whether it's procrastinating, there's always a point where you can make the decision to turn left or to turn right. All you do is you pause for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, maybe 90 seconds, or even two minutes, 120 seconds. And you repeat to yourself your personal goals. You close your eyes and you breathe and you repeat to yourself your personal goals the goals that you want to achieve in this lifetime. 
and then you open your eyes again and then you make the decision to turn left or to turn right. And guess what? Either direction is perfectly fine. If you indulge in the chocolate cake or if you indulge in this critical self-thinking, the negative self-talk, at least you're doing it mindfully. And of course, if you turn right and you don't engage in the habit, that's cool too. But there's never any self-criticism about which direction you choose. It's the idea of being mindful about it and doing it with full awareness rather than unconsciously. And then eventually in the future, yes, you will want to work to take the habit away actively, but at first it's just stopping, breathing, repeating your goals to yourself, reminding yourself what your path is, and then choosing to turn left or to turn right. So that's the departure point exercise. Send me messages later if you need more clarification on that. Next thing we're doing today, next tangible tool, yeah, it's cool, is this, a dream list. Okay, you may or may not have seen this before. I know it's very small on the screen there. It's probably very challenging to read it. So what I'd like you to do on your sheet of paper is to make one big column that you're gonna write things in and then three smaller four smaller columns next to it. And the exercise today will just be about 10 items. You can, you can do more on your own later. So hopefully you have some lined paper. One column is kind of larger, kind of wider, takes up maybe half the page so you can write things and then you have a three column, four columns next to it. All right, at the top of the first column, it's your dream list items things in life that you have dreamt about or will dream about to accomplish. So just label the column, put dream list items at the top of the column. The second column to the right is E's, E-A-S-E. -E. The next column is importance. Now I know I'm going kind of fast. We don't have a ton of time. I'm being very ambitious to do this with you this morning for this meditation, but it's just so important. So we have dream list items, we have ease, we have importance, then we have power, right? Power for the third column. And then commitment date for the last one. All right, I can email this to you as well. So if this is, if you're not feeling this vibe right now of writing all this stuff, that's totally fine. We'll just do the meditation. And you can email me if you choose or, or send me a message and I can shoot you this over in a private message. So what the dream list is gonna be is we're gonna free your mind like Morpheus did to Neo. <laughs> we're gonna free your mind for a moment. Remove all constraints, all concerns of restrictions of monetary you know, requirements, time requirements to do anything, anything. Don't take that word lightly. We're gonna remove all time constraints, all monetary constraints, all physical constraints to do anything in the world. It's gonna be extremely liberating to do this exercise. So the process is we're gonna go through a short meditation together and then once we open our eyes, you're gonna write down dream list items, things that you want to accomplish in life, anything. So let me give you some examples of what I've put on my list here. I know you probably can't read them because they're very small. My first one there is write a yoga sutra commentary, teach a yoga philosophy workshop, conduct a yoga sutra webinar, teach yoga classes, see my dad weekly, see my sister and my niece every three months, travel to Japan, travel to Northern Europe, meditate 15 minutes twice a day, learn to improvise on the guitar, travel to India, so it can be, so anything, 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 anything. Very simple or profound, right? And then we'll talk about the other columns later. We just wanna talk about the dream list items now. Don't worry about the ease or the importance or the power yet. Okay, so let's do our meditation and then when we open, thank you, Chelsea, it is powerful. When we open our eyes, I want you just to start writing. All right, so let's do our meditation. So please sit tall, find your comfortable seat if you're not there already. 
have your notebook right by you. So as soon as we open our eyes, you can start writing down ideas without having to think because the thinking mind is not where our power comes from. Our soul knows more than we do. Okay, adjust your seat, please. Relax the shoulders, relax the face. Close the eyes, hands on the knees. Oh, one thing I forgot. So let's identify the midbrain. We have a couple of new people joining us this morning. Open the eyes one more time, please. Take the peace fingers of your right hand, place them to the place, the point between the eyebrows. Take the peace fingers of the other hand and put them on the occipital ridge, back of the skull, the very back of the head just gently. So you have two points of contact in the front, two points of contact in the back. Now close your eyes once again. And what we're doing is just identifying the midway point between these two points, right? So just identify with your mind sensitivity, the midbrain. It's roughly the location of the pituitary gland and the pineal body. Just become aware of the midbrain, middle of the head. Now release the hands to the back to the knees, please. Keep your awareness of the midbrain and start to breathe deeply. Let's please count backwards on the breath. So your first inhale and then as you exhale, count to yourself 10. Next inhale and as you exhale, nine. Next exhale is eight. So count to yourself, please. Count down. Relaxing and deepening your consciousness more with each exhale. Let the shoulders stay heavy. Keep growing the crown of the head high towards the sky. Once you reach zero, just become still. It doesn't matter if you reach zero or not, just become still. Continue to be aware of that point in the midbrain, the third the seat of the third eye. And remember, our higher consciousness knows our Dharma. Our higher consciousness knows our path. And when we experience the qualities of our soul, when we bring them into this physical world, we create this unbreakable connection with our soul so the soul's wisdom can flow in. So one of the best ways to experience the qualities of our soul is to experience joy and bliss. You can conjure this energy at will. So we're gonna move awareness with our breath. Move your attention to the skin between the eyebrows the surface of the forehead. And without shaping the breath, just when you notice the body inhale, move your focal point of awareness inward into the midbrain. And then gently the awareness moves back to the surface of the skin between the eyebrows as your body exhales. And this is going to be a pulsation of awareness, a slow movement inward on the inhale and outward on the exhale. Very simple, this is a Kriya, a movement of mental energy in and out.
the breath is very subtle. You're only breathing a third or maybe even a sixth or an eighth of your lung capacity, very subtle. So just continue the movement. Inhale takes your awareness into the brain. Exhale takes the awareness to the point between the eyebrows on the skin of the forehead. Just another moment. Now relax the technique and rest your awareness on the third eye seat, the seed of higher vision, the middle of the brain, and allow, just allow, bliss and joy to bubble up, to expand. It's always there. Uncover it, create space for it, feel it, embody it completely. Corners of your lips might spontaneously lift towards the ears. slowly take a deeper inhale together. Nothing too dramatic, just breathe in deeper. And through the nose, exhale. Now before opening the eyes, I want to give you a couple pointers here. Release all constrictions, all constraints, all anxieties, all worries. Allow yourself to be free with your thought, with your imagination. When you write down your dream list items, just conjure up everything you've ever wanted to do as a child, as a teenager. Allow the memories to come in of what you wanted, and of course what you want today. No constraints of time, of money, of physical limitations. So go ahead, open the eyes, take your writing utensil, and begin to jot down dream list items that you would love to accomplish in this lifetime. Just write, don't stop, just write, don't think. Another 30 to 45 seconds. Doesn't matter how far you got, hopefully you got at least 10. 
So what we're doing with the dream list is now we're going to rate each item in terms of how easy they are to accomplish. So a 10 is very easy, a one is very difficult. So for example, I have on my list, see my dad weekly. That's easy, that gets a 10, okay? Um, writing a yoga sutra commentary, that's hard. That gets a two. <laughs> Travel to India, you know, book a plane flight and go. I put a six for that one, all right? So that's the ease column. 10 is very easy, one is very hard. I'm not gonna give you time to do it now because it'll drag on with our meditation, but that's just how it's done, you do it later. Now, the next column, importance. Very simple, how important is this thing to you? So 10 is very important, one is not important, or relatively speaking, not, not as important. All of, them, all of them are important. So for example, on mine, I have recording more original music. That's fun and that's fulfilling for my soul, but that gets a one. Teach a yoga philosophy webinar. That's important to me, that gets a 10. See my sister and my niece every three months because they're out of state, that gets a nine. So you see what the importance column is, okay? 10 is very important, one is less important. The next column over, power. The label of the third, third number column is power. Then that's simply a multiplication of the two, of the two previous columns. So for example, an item that's very simple, which gets a 10, in ease and very important, which gets a 10 in importance, multiply those together, it gets a power of 100. Those are the things that we need to commit to immediately. Okay, If something is very hard, like for me writing a Yoga Sutra commentary, that's a 2 in ease, but it's very important, which is a 10, multiply those two, it's a 20. So that's something that I need to do in my life, but I'm not going to commit to completing it immediately because it's going to take a lot of mental effort, a lot of work, a lot of planning. Okay, then the commitment date, the last column, you gotta put a date down that you'll start working on it. <laughs> all right, now, I hope I'm not doing a disservice by giving you all these beautiful tools and not diving deeper and allowing more time, but I want you to have tangible things to ponder and to work on. I'm available, so this is, my dharma is to teach and to help and to share with things with you things that work for me so reach out to me um, i'm a four desires coach or at least i'm training to be one i would love to walk you through the four desires process as i've done with several of us on the call today i'd love to assist with your path in any way that i can this is what i do in life aside from selling houses which pays my bills <laughs> so i would be more than thrilled to assist you in any way i can moving forward with either the four desires with these dream list items with your meditation practice. If you don't have a yoga teacher that helps you, seek one out. Find a yoga teacher that resonates with you that you can ask questions to. Look, at, look into Rod Stryker, look into Cosman here in town, look into any of the amazing yoga gurus that are available to us and find a teacher that you resonate with and study with that teacher. We are blessed with so many. Okay. So I feel a little strange cutting this off now because we're barely scratching the surface, but I wanted to give you the stuff, so. Reach out, continue your meditation practice. We'll stay in touch. I think um, what we're gonna do is weekend mornings. So I'm feeling like Saturday and Sunday mornings we'll probably do these live meditations again. So be on the lookout for in announcements. I'll put it on my stories. So probably Saturday, Sunday mornings, 8 a.m., we'll gather like this and do these meditations on the weekends. Christine, my class at Kintsugi is 7.30 on Wednesday mornings, and we do a guided meditation, asana practice, and then yoga nidra. Chris, thank you. You are a gem to this world. Chris Blunt, thank you. Thank you, Lori, so much. Nicole, thank you. And also, since you're asking about Kintsugi, there are other amazing teachers, one of whom is on the call right now, Celine Go. She's here, she teaches at Kintsugi as well. And we also have the amazing Greg Go, who teaches Ashtanga. So if anyone wants to check that out, Tuesday, Thursday evenings and Saturday morning at 10, I'll see you there for that. Namaste, Marina. Thank you, Dee. I love you all, this has been awesome. Ali. 
Yes, I agree. Thank you for this amazing collective energy. Much love, Allie. Anna, I'm glad you enjoyed. Awesome. Okay, everyone. See you real soon. Take care. Namaste.